Lau, what's happening? How are you? I'm doing great, Scott. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. They they said you were in the woods. Here I am expecting to be in the OR and everything. And <laughs> you're shooting turkeys. What's the deal? <laughs> yeah, that's my, uh, as they say, I, I do my job so I can so I can afford a turkey hunt. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, my, that's my real passion. Yeah, it, it is unbelievable. And it is the most disciplined. I mean, everything you do is disciplined. That's the most disciplined form to hunting, isn't it? Because you got to be statue still right there. Well, it's very interactive. You spend a lot of time kind of in a chess match with the, the wild turkey trying to outsmart them. And uh, as one of my favorite writers always said, that I don't hunt turkeys because I want to. I hunt them because I have to. Uh, and you kind of get a <laughs> compulsion where you where you, uh, you almost can't get away from it. It's a disease. It's, it's a release, right, for, for everything. It is. It, it only happens about six weeks out of the year. So fortunately for my family and my wife and my staff, it's uh, it's a short time, but it's a good six weeks. I, I bet it is. Uh, let's talk a little bit about medical and everything. Of course, a lot of people um, focusing on Tua Tangavailoa, who had broken his hand. He has a procedure done. And a lot of people amazed. I think yesterday he was throwing the ball around pretty good, uh, Nick Saban said. Are you surprised? Because I... It's hard to have media people and fans understand it's not only about the procedure, but it's about the person, the rehab. There's all kind of factors here. It's not just surgery or just rehab. Yeah, there's no question. I think it starts with the person, with the, with the athlete that gets injured. And, you know, Tua and, and many of the athletes that, that we've had the fortune of having in Tuscaloosa are really amazing uh, physical specimen. They're they're kind of fine-tuned athletes, but they're also very focused and, and hardworking, and they've kind of gotten where they are because of a lot of different factors. But one of those factors is that they, they get over injuries quickly, and I think that's something that's really poorly understood in, in sports is that a lot of the athletes, their elite players, such as NFL football players, they have innate healing ability that's probably different than me or you or, or other people, and that, that may be why one of the reasons why that they excel like they do you know, at a young age and all the way through their career. So, you know, it's these are different people. It's a different different type of person than the person off the street, the general patient. But they also have a great opportunity because of the the team at the University of Alabama with the medical staff, the training staff, Jeff on and his crew, and you know, all the way up to Scott Cochran and his strength and conditioning crew. So it's you know, they've got kind of the perfect scenario of of a good patient that's got good ability to heal, a work ethic where they want to heal and they want to get well, and they've got a team behind them that's really outstanding. So it's, it's a pretty perfect storm. And for folks listening, Jeff Allen won the trainer of the year or something like that. Got a huge national award recently, I think. He, he did. He was named by the National Athletic Trainers Association, which is the national group for all the athletic trainers in the country. He was named as the athletic trainer of the year. So big award for Jeff and well-deserved. He, he's you know, he's been here in Tuscaloosa with Coach Saban since he got here in 2007, but before that was at Central Florida and Kentucky and um, Tennessee Chattanooga and, and really has had an outstanding career, and, and he's he's kind of the nuts and bolts that holds the whole thing together. And you've got to work with him and he with you, uh, I'm guessing kind of like, and this is just an example I'm coming up with in my head, a head coach to assistant coach from the standpoint of you, you got to be on the same page on whether – okay, we need to be aggressive here with the rehab, and okay, he's experiencing some soreness here, uh, so we need to back off. And I'm not just talking about two of I'm talking about in general. Yeah, no question. A very similar relationship. I think you know we communicate pretty much every day um, about something, and even outside of spring and, and fall football camp. But, uh, it, you know, I think the coach-coordinator relationship kind of makes sense, but I would say Jeff's probably the coach, the head coach, <laughs> And me and Norm, me and Norman Waldrop and Benton Emblem and all my partners that Dr. Andrews that work with him are kind of the assistant coaches because you know he he kind of controls everything. He's in charge of the the rehab, the on the field stuff, the weight room, the what the guys do in the training room every day. And we're just kind of putting in little ideas along the way. So so Jeff's really the head coach in the whole matter, honestly. So so what after the procedure? What is your input? Because I would think you just hand it off to him. You said you talk to him every day. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, we, we talk about it every day, and, and it's not just about one particular athlete. We usually have several athletes that are going through rehab and injuries at, right. at any certain time, and that's throughout the year. 
So we'll talk about, you know, where the athlete is and their progress. As soon as we, we fix them or we have an injury that we have to do surgery on, or even if we don't have to do surgery, we, we talk about the process and, you know, what their expectations will be at certain time frames, you know, when they're going to start moving their hand, for instance, or when they're going to start gripping a ball and throwing a ball. And so we have kind of timetables in mind that we discuss early. And then for each individual athlete, it changes along the way. And some guys, you know, as I mentioned, are really resilient and, and heal quickly and get over things quickly, and, and we can move really fast. And so we talk about that. And there's some guys that have a little swelling and pain and, and maybe don't recover quite as quickly. We have to slow down. So it's not a – there's no cookie-cutter process. It's really a, a day-to-day evaluation of how the individual athlete's doing and then modify his rehab to that particular case and, and scenario. And if you're talking about a hand injury like Tua or a knee like Jerry Judy or uh, a shoulder or whatever, I, I think people don't understand, too, this isn't just one rehab session a day, okay, see you later till tomorrow. This is kind of ongoing, I'm guessing, several per day, some icing, uh, all, all kind of stuff to get it moving and healed as, as fast as possible. It, it's really a full-time job, Scott. I mean, it, it's amazing if you watch these guys – at the college level and at the pro level too, you know, the advantage, you know, say in, in a high school athlete here in Birmingham that, that breaks their hand or has a ACL injury, they get good rehab. There's good medical care. There's good athletic trainers, good physical therapists in Birmingham and they do a great job, but it's a, it's a, you know, sometimes at school they'll work out, but in general, it's a physical therapy routine plus what they do at school in college. They, they go in early in the morning. They work with Jeff and his staff starting early in the morning and they're there pretty much all day. And, and it's really, you know, other than, than the time they spend going to class or study hall, what they have to do academically, it's really a full-time job. And so they spend hours in the training room and, and working on their injury. And, and I think that's one of the reasons they, they recover so quickly. Uh, and I know it's we, we got to be precarious here for folks listening in with, with uh, doctor-client privileges and all those kind of things. Um, but Jerry Judy was talked about had a meniscus. I've had a couple of those. I was riding a bike at my age in three weeks and I'm fairly high pain t- tolerance. So fans listening in should not be alarmed or get all torn up about what Jerry Judy's, you know, rehabbing from right now. Correct. No meniscus injuries in general are, are typically recovered and, and do well. Um, and, and there's a range. There's some people we've had athletes over the years, you know, several years ago, Mark Ingram tore his meniscus right at the beginning of the season and missed the first couple of games after his Heisman Trophy, uh, uh, after he won the Heisman Trophy. And, you know, I think he played three weeks out from the meniscus. And so, you know, there's a range of anywhere from probably a week in really aggressive situations out to six or eight weeks in a more slow situation. So, you know, for any individual that tears their meniscus, including me or you, uh, the recovery process is, is usually good and people usually get back to their same level and should have a good outcome long term. And obviously, for a Jerry Judy who's doing a lot of cuts and he's got great footwork, it might be a little different than an offensive tackle where you brace him up and he might can might can come back quicker. You know, there's, so positionally, it's different too, right? Yeah, no doubt. Position specific uh, demands determine a lot of what happens. Yeah, you know, we have, uh, for instance, high ankle sprains are a really common thing in football, and when they happen in offensive linemen because you can really tie an offensive lineman down with tape and brace and right. all kinds of protection devices and they, and they don't have to be quite as mobile, they can get back quickly. Whereas a wide receiver or some skill position guy with a high ankle sprain, he may take six or eight weeks sometimes to get back. And so it's position demands definitely factor into their return time. Dr. Lyle Kane, our guest here for a few minutes, uh, team doctor for Alabama and several high schools and schools at the Andrews Institute in Birmingham. With Tua, and, and I know it's hard to speculate, but him throwing like normal, that's what I worry about. You know what I mean? I see him tossing. Okay, fine. That's terrific that he's doing it. But throwing like normal, is that a, a few weeks? Is that dependent on him? Or what are we talking about here? You know, it, it, it depends a lot on his recovery process and just how he does individually. Yeah, I think most uh, broken hand injuries – heal anywhere from three to six weeks. And, and during that time frame, some people get their motion back early and, and become pain-free really soon. And, you know, I think for, for a college athlete, the benefit is that they have a lot of coaches and people working with them that know their mechanics and know how they throw. And they they can really watch them closely and go through a progression to make sure that they're not going to cause any kind of 
problems by throwing abnormally, uh, you know, or changing their mechanics. And so I think it's, you know, that college athletes have a lot of eyes on them, and, right. and that's why I think I think the process can move a little faster than it might in, in a high school athlete or some other situation. But this is an injury with your expertise of procedure that he comes back 100% whenever that time is. This isn't lingering or something to worry about, you know, in August or anything like that, right? I mean. That's right. The expectation would be that he would come back normally without any problems. Um, I, I wanted to ask you this, too, and this is concerning Auburn because I read an article. You probably read it, too. They've had a rash of injuries, some ACLs and different things. And there was criticism and a question asked of Malzahn about the strength and conditioning. And you mentioned Scott Cochran being key. Now, to me, looking at that and knowing what I know, I'm thinking, okay, I know the strength and conditioning is key to preventing injuries or coming back from injuries. But I I don't want to put all that on an Auburn strength coach that they've had four or five, you know, pretty serious injuries so far. What what are we talking about here with the strength and conditioning in general compared to an outbreak of injuries? Well, you know, I think that particular story is a non-story, honestly. But but the reality is strength and conditioning does play into injuries to some degree, but mainly the overuse type injuries. So, you know, when you're looking at things like, like tendonitis and hamstring injuries and stress fractures and some of the things that are more overuse injuries, I think strength and conditioning can play a factor. The injuries that, and I don't know specifically about Auburn's injuries, honestly, other than what I've read, but but the reality is the things that they've had, like ACLs and Achilles ruptures right. um, and, and broken legs, those have nothing to do with strength and conditioning at all. So, you know, I know in their case, at least the injuries I know about, they have zero connection to the strength and conditioning program. But But when an athlete does have an injury coming back, I think strength and conditioning is a huge part of it because, you know, working back into shape is really important how you do that. You have to communicate – you know, Jeff Allen and Scott Cochran spend a lot of time talking about these athletes as they come back from injury because we want to make sure that we don't cause further damage or move them too fast or move them too slow, for that matter. Um, so it's a big factor. But I, I think, you know, any time there's a rash of, in, rash of injuries, fans, coaches, the media, you know, us as doctors, we all look for that that reason. Right, uh, right. You know, why did it happen? And the reality is, in most cases, it's just it's just a bad combination of bad luck, right time, right place, right force, and... You know, we've had injuries, even at my high school, where my son goes to school at my alma mater, we've had years where we've had like seven or eight labral tears in the shoulder. And then we've had years we've had zero. And, and right. during the year when there's seven or eight, everybody's looking to see if it's the strength program. Is it something they're eating? Is it something doing at practice? And everybody's trying to figure out the root cause. But the reality is, in most cases, it's just bad luck. Well, that's what I was thinking. It was just a, a non uh, You could tear your Achilles stepping off a curb. I mean... You know, no, I mean, no, no question. And when you look at NFL football, you know, Achilles injuries have really risen over the last 10 years, and, and we're not really sure. We don't know if it's just because people are so much stronger and bigger. Um, but but I think Achilles, ACLs, some of the things that, that are acute injuries that aren't particularly preventable that we know of, I think those you, know, you can take off the table as being any kind of strength and conditioning issue for sure. What what is uh, before we let you go? Some of the keys I know medically everything's evolving, just like strength and conditioning and training. Um, is it as evolving as much as we think with technology and and different things? And and that's part of the reason athletes can come back quicker as well. Yeah, it definitely is. I think some of it is the technology. You know, we have new devices um, that we can use, such as. You know, really rigid things to fix fractures. We have um, biologic opportunities such as you know stem cells and PRP and some of the, the different things that are out there that are biologic alternatives to try to speed healing up. And then ultimately, some of it is just experience. And you know, our ability to get people back at a certain time, some of it is is a book answer of of average means. So if you have you know somebody say with a broken hand and you know the average time to return is six weeks. Well, that means that some people may get back at three weeks and some of them may get back at nine weeks, but right, the average is right. six weeks. So I think experience with these athletes over the years, um, especially the real elite athletes, has led to a lot faster recovery and faster rehab processes in a lot of injuries that where 15 years ago we might have had you know, the average ACL, for instance, coming back at eight to 12 months. Now the average is probably somewhere around six to eight months, and so right. um, you know, p- part of that is technology. Part of it's the athletes being better conditioned and better training, 
better nutrition, all those things. And part of it is just experience of of understanding that these athletes are different and they can get back quicker than the average person. I remember John Casmus. Do you remember? Wasn't his four or five months? He was ridiculous. Do you remember <laughs> John, that? John's a close friend of mine. We, we grew up together and played yeah. football together, so I've known John for, for 40 years. But, um, yeah, John, John was kind of the – uh, as I like to tell patients, sometimes we change rehab processes based on the outliers. And, and John was an outlier. He was one of those guys that Dr. Andrews reconstructed his ACL, you know, I think his freshman year at Alabama back in like 1986 right. or seven. Right. And John, John came back, I believe he actually practiced at three months, which was really aggressive and really early. Unbelievable. And John, if, if you know him, John's just one of those really, um, you know, fit in shape, very oh, aggressive, yeah. motivated guy. And, and so, and he came back extremely early, and I think people like that move the curve overall. And so I think, you know, it's not realistic to think that everybody can get back in three months, but there probably are some that can that have the right genetics and motivation and and, and healing ability.